Um, good afternoon. It's a Wealthy Board of Health virtual meeting, April 14th at 5 p.m. Um, uh, on our agenda, the first variance is 53 East Street at, and 70 F Street. Very hard to find, but we found it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's Get our back yeah, sure Tucked away, us. but took a while. A lot of turns, right, Nick? Yeah, lot of turns. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay, so that's um Jason. Um you're up for that. Can you enable screen sharing and I can pull the plan up so that we can all look at it while Jason You're all set. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yep. So um, this property is actually in the process of being sold. It has a three bedroom uh, log cabin house on the small lot. And then it has another vacant lot that's attached to it. It's all, it's all being sold as one. Um, and it's a pretty tight area. There's a wetland to the west and there's a whole bunch of wells to the east. Um, so it's kind of sandwiched in between. So what I've tried to do, there's there's nine variances. And what I tried to do is basically try to maximize what I consider to be the most important variances. And that would be the the well to septic system variances. There's there's some existing conditions there that aren't that aren't terrific um, in terms of the existing well. The the existing well for the cottage actually is um is defunct and it needs to they need to put a new well in. So what we're looking to do is install the new well. Um, along the west lot line, um, and then we'd be installing a new septic tank and pump chamber on the north side of the house um, that would be accessed off E Street, and then we're going to pump it to a raised leach area on the secondary lot. Um, and what I've been able to do is I've been able to maximize all the distances to all the wells and septic. So the proposed well is 100 feet from all the septics, including the existing ones. And then the existing or the proposed leach area is over 100 feet from all the existing wells and the proposed well. So um, that was the thing I was the most uh, concerned about. But in the meantime, what we're looking for is we're looking for a four foot variance from the septic tank to the foundation wall. Um, a three foot variance from the proposed pump chamber to the foundation wall, <clears throat> a 16 foot variance from the proposed septic tank to the proposed well, a 24 foot variance from the proposed pump chamber to the proposed well, a no reserve area variance. Um, and this is an, actually an isolated vegetated wetland. It's not actually a wetland that's regulated under the Wetlands Protection Act. It's just regulated under the Board of Health bylaw and also the the environmental wetlands bylaw from the Conservation Commission, but we're looking for a 27 foot variance from the proposed leach area to the isolated wetland, an 11 foot variance from the pump chamber to the wetland, and a three foot variance from the proposed septic tank to the wetland. Um, and then also, we're also looking for the variance to have the leach facility, the leach area be located above existing grade in the 100 year floodplain because it's in a flood zone there. So I've been able to minimize all the the major variances. We're getting getting rid of a cesspool that's in groundwater about 20 feet from the wetland. Um, so it, it's all in all, it's a, a tremendous improvement for the area. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. Okay, Jason. Hillary, do you have any questions first before yeah. we get started? I guess I'm not sure which E and F street this is. I'm wondering where the flood flooding would come from. It's basically this um, isolated land okay. subject to flooding. Okay. It's just that's a just a low area in there, and it's it, it's designated as a. It, it's not from coastal storm flowage. It's just okay. isolated land subject to flooding. So. Thank you. It looks like it's yep. a, it's zone A E. Hillary. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to look at it on my small surface here, so it's not as big as I like to see things these days. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, Jason, uh, uh, Jay yes, Gary. Uh, I actually only uh, uh, I only noticed one thing uh, uh, is is that there should probably be a clean out on the building sewer <laughs> going to the septic tank. That's fine. That's the only thing that. I see. <laughs> okay. 
And I Jason, imagine uh, Mr. Janet. Uh, yes, I'm Janet? here. Yes, Nick. Yeah. I was going to ask Jason if he considered a, an AI unit with that wetland. I didn't only because it, it's not required under the bylaw, um, and it's you know it's a it's another. This is going to be a ex very expensive upgrade as it is, um, and that's doing the IA is probably going to add another fifteen thousand to that. So um, it's just you know, we're just trying to get the keep the cost down here, and and we're we've, we're meeting the five foot separation to groundwater, and yes, we're also meeting the state requirement of fifty feet, you know, fifty feet from the wetland, which is the state requirement. So. All right. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? I, I was just going to say, I imagine the two parcels have to be connected to one another by ownership. Um, the deed will certainly, the deed restriction will reference both. So just. Okay. Yeah, the vacant lot's unbuildable on its own anyhow. So it, it really, it has no value in, term, in terms of being kept separate, so. Right. Yeah, and, and it's there's really a cluster of homes there too. You know, I mean, you know, the challenge for yeah. your wells was was definitely visualized yesterday when we saw it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was our concern. Um, um, the distance from the well, we we recognize that there was a hundred foot requirement, and I think from the statement that we've heard that not only our well but all the other wells uh, adjacent to the area are a uh, hundred feet away from. Yes. Uh, Okay, so that's, you know, we feel good about that. That was our major concern. Good. Uh, he, he, it's a quite a puzzle that he put together here. Yes, yeah. Yeah, Jason it does it well. <laughs> Jason does it well. <laughs> this is the machinery, how they're coming in. And we just okay. have one other question. Uh, as it was noted, this, this is a very congested area and uh, it's an overgrown congested area. Yes. And so, uh, we have a question about the access to the construction of the various elements of the project. How will the machinery come in on what access? So um, what I, I, I know that uh, I, there's a good chance that Corey Brundage is going to be doing this job. Um, and I discussed with him what he was thinking is that he would come in off E Street, which is probably where you came in to access the you know to see the property yes yes um and so you come in off there the the septic tanks would go in last so he would come in and um essentially that whole leach area would be put in with uh mini equipment uh you know like a like a Good. like a fifth size 50 mini excavator and 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 probably a skid steer and maybe a, if they can get a one ton down around the house and over um oh, would be going so most of it the front of the no the of, back of the, the house. back of the house where the deck is that's where the machinery is coming in no it will be coming down over the low side like over over where the, the septic tanks are proposed over here and and around and down around where the proposed well would be between the proposed well and the house and then out and around kind of following the line of where the pressure line goes from the pump chamber to the d box yeah, so that, that's, 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 that's continuing uh, to go down uh, E Street in the back of their property and just past the property down Cutting that in. way. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. yeah. yeah unless, okay. unless for some reason, 4th Avenue and F Street are both paper roads, and those roads are not constructed. It's all wooded in there. Yes. If there's, yes. if there's some way that he can get it some kind of access or some kind of approval from you know, the neighbors there to allow him to access to there would definitely make things a lot easier. I don't think people would be able to that. No. We have gone through no. great lengths to keep that road um, um, undeveloped. All of okay. our properties face that, our mm -hmm. windows face that, and it's heavily wooded. I don't think if you went there, you could imagine the way a truck could get around. You know, actually, we've walked yeah. the property, you know, out of interest and respect for the owner. And this is something we hope that can be achieved. We're very, very supportive. Uh, but we went and looked, um, you know, from the E Street perspective uh, in the back of the house and then off to the side. 
And there's plenty of access uh, room there. There's one very old, um, look like a fire pit, but it's gotta be yeah. like 50 or 60 years old. I mean, I don't think it has much value as a fire pit, but um, you know, other than that, there are really no obstacles, uh, you know, and there's plenty of room for navigation there. So um, Correct. that's sort of our position on, on this and we're, we're not, we're not legally representing the, the, uh, but the neighbors. But we are representing our neighbors who don't live here. Yeah. Um, we've one talked in, one with all in Connecticut, um, two in New York, and we are reporting back to them from what we gleaned from this meeting. And our concern is leave F Street, don't bring machinery on this um, paper road. It's never been touched and we really would not want machinery coming through there. I don't think it's practical, uh, most importantly, if you were to go out and take a look. Um, obviously, uh, if there was some major obstacle coming off of East Street and just past uh, the back of the house there, you know, that, that would be a different issue. But, the, you know, it's absolutely um, acceptable and plenty of room there to navigate. You had mentioned, uh, I think, reference coming in with uh, small to medium sized equipment and that would even further support. I was happy to hear that actually, uh, you know, using that as the access point. Okay. Uh, yeah, Janet? I, yes. Uh, Nick, Janet? I, I can't see yeah. the gallery view, so I don't know who's raising their hand. Okay, yeah. Nick, first. Nick, I, was I, just, I'm, I still remain a little concerned about nutrient flow, uh, the nature of that wetland. I, I don't know. Uh, if, if we really shouldn't be putting a, a system in there to help protect that wetland. I mean, the, the, the state of the, the affairs nowadays uh, with wetlands and the need to protect them, I think uh, I'm, I'm just a little concerned. I don't know if, if you think I'm off base, Hillary, the, or anything, but. The flow, Nick, the flow is pretty small. I, yeah. I think if it was a big flow, I think it'd be more of a concern, but the flow is pretty small for just three bedrooms. All right. That's my that's my two cents. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? I'm all good. And we have a motion and a please. Yes, you can have a motion, but I do need um, some help filling some parts of it in. So um bear with me one second here i am gonna can you guys see the screen we can see you oh, you see me not the screen okay i'm gonna pull back up the motion maker here sorry i saw the motion maker before yeah no i just yeah, before <laughs> I gotta get it in the right spot. There we go. So um, I move to approve the JC Ellis design plan dated 12-7-2020 and grant the eight variances, eight variances requested in the letter of, I don't have the date of the letter, if someone can get that for me. March 31st. Okay, 3-31-21. For the upgrade of a septic system to serve a three-bedroom structure, grandfathered non-conforming dwelling with respect to nitrogen loading, um, subject to the following conditions. Yep. Design flow to be limited to 330.04 gallons per day to serve three bedrooms, no increase in habitable area or conversion of use without Board of Health review, uh, new well permits required and, and water test, and then we have the deed recording and an annual inspection of the pumps um, and any other equipment that moves. In the deed recording, mention that, that deeds for both properties. Yep, deeds for both properties. And you wanna see a clean out. This isn't gonna go into the- um... There should be at least one clean out yep. of the building sewer. Yep, yep, got it. Okay, a second. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm, I'm still hesitant. Uh, what's a quorum? Of, uh, I mean, what's uh, we we need three votes to pass. Um. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. 
All right, I'll, I'll, I'll vote for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, just just a, a suggestion for the area out there, we could use some house numbers. <laughs> just an FYI. Many okay. of us, as we were traveling around trying to find you, we found that not, not necessarily in your cluster, but around the whole place. I mean, there's no, there's very few house numbers. <laughs> so we, had, we had a very interesting trip. So thank you. Okay, well, you know, thank you. And we'll, okay. we'll share that with the people that, uh, that, that we you know. can. Yes. There's been, <laughs> there's, been an up, there's been an upgrade on the street sign. So we, we hope that you were able to uh, find E Street, but uh, understood. So we'll share that with the neighbors. When they okay, come back. great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And, and uh, I want to get back to Jason. Um, how can we stay informed about? the machinery and uh, where it's coming and going and the access and all that. Should we talk to you directly? No, I don't have any supervision after on it after it gets approved. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to um, probably get in touch with either the real estate agent or the, or the owner in terms of who ends up ultimately getting contracted with it. Oh. I don't, um, I don't, I don't supervise the construction or the, anything like that. So. Once it's once it gets approved, I'm I'm done until I have to come back and certify it. When it's... Okay. So you have to work that out with the the prop, Mrs. Huspelt. So. Okay. We'll Thank you it. very much, and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Beautiful spot. Thank you. Thanks. Hey. Thank you, and uh -huh. we're going to bid you all adieu. I know you have another other pieces on yeah. your agenda, but thank you very much for having us and allowing us to participate. We appreciate it very much. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a good night. Yeah, Thank have you. a nice night. Doesn't seem okay. to be a touch up. No, how do we get over here? Um, next on the agenda is 20 Briar Lane, um, starboard tack holdings. That's Jason again. Yeah, so this property is actually also in the process of being sold. Um, it's an apartment building, has five bedrooms total in it. Uh, it has an existing Title V system in there, old code Title V. It's a thousand gallon tank and a leach pit, and the leach pit's failed. So, um, what we're looking to do is install a new um, septic tank, which would be a 2,500 gallon septic tank and a pump chamber. Uh, I'm sorry, a pump vault, a Renko pump vault, and also an Arenko Advantex two pod nitrogen reducing system. Uh, the leach area is um, consists of two leach chambers, pressure dosed. Um, we'd be looking to utilize the 50% reduction in the size of the leach area that's allowed uh, under remedial use for the um, for the Arenko system. Um, but we're also looking for nine variances. There's not a lot of room on this site. Kind of um, uh, pigeonhole this one into. So we're looking to have um, a variance for the um, proposed septic system to be located within the zone one of the public water supply well, which I think is the Flying Fish Restaurant across the street, across yeah. Briar Lane. Um, and we have 107 feet provided and 24 feet variance requested as a component, which would be the septic tank. Um, we're asking for a 39 foot variance from the proposed leach area at SAS to the well for parcel. Um, um, actually, that should be parcel 20, not parcel three that says there. Um, and we're looking for a seven foot variance from the proposed leach area to the slab foundation, which would be a, gar a garage that's there. We're looking for a 15 foot variance on the proposed leachery to the foundation wall, which is the, the main dwelling. Uh, we're looking for a five foot variance from the proposed leachery to the lot line, which would be Ryder Court. We're looking for a five foot variance from the proposed septic tank to the foundation wall, which would be the main dwelling. We're looking for a five foot variance from the proposed Arenko pods, the, the Arenko unit to the foundation wall. Uh, 
for the main dwelling, and we're also looking for a five-foot variance from the proposed pods to the slab, slab foundation for the garage. And we're also looking for a no reserve area variance. Um, a lot of these variances will actually go away once town water is available on Prior Lane. I think that's coming in the near future, I hope. Right. Uh, but a lot of these wells, I would think, would probably be eliminated and once that happens. So. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? I have, I have a. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, uh, Jason, your leaching area is really unusual. Okay. Um, in terms of the, I, I see, it looks like you, you're proposing concrete structures, but there's two pipes kind of going in towards the sides. Yeah, so there's there's four laterals going through, four pressure dose laterals, like one yep. inch diameter laterals. Yeah. Um, I've done many, many of these where I've run two laterals through the leach chambers, but just because of the area that I was um, afforded here to put the leacher. I ended up with putting four feet of stone on the sides of the chambers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel as if I, I felt like I, it would be better if we spread the distribution out um, of, through the stone as well as through the lat, the, the leach chamber. So rather than just putting two laterals through the leach chambers, I also have two laterals going through the stone to kind of spread out the distribution throughout the entire I leach area. Uh, will they just be to get protected? Better, just to get better distribution. Do you th uh, I, uh, I was just worried about the laterals in the parking area that aren't covered by the concrete structure. Yeah, so the, some of the laterals are actually will actually go through the chambers. Yep. And then the other laterals would be um, outside, you know, right? covered up. You'd have outside that, and then you'd have. Um, the or the orifice shields on top of the uh, the orifices there, right. and those are all those are usually all schedule well, they're all schedule forty. So. Yep, yep, yeah. Um, so how far down is it, Jason? It's only a, like a foot or two down, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it's two feet. Finish yeah. grade is you think, you, you don't think that those laterals 13, are going to get. I, I just worry, you, you know, I know what happens to laterals in, in parking areas because of the vibration, yeah. they get all, they get all moved around. Do they park there? I thought they parked, um, uh, I thought they all parked over here. Yeah, most of the parking is in that other spot on the south side of the property. Yeah. There's, there's one, there's this one area I think where they, it's, like where the garage in front of the garage where they kind of park parallel to rider court there. Right. Cause I've seen people parking in front of the garage there. Yeah. Yeah. I they definitely to. do. Okay. So that, that's, that was my only concern that, and I think there should be at least one clean out on each building sewer line. So that'd be three clean outs anyway. That's fine. You know. And the other thing that we could do with the orifice shields we've done before is you take a piece of um, either Schedule 80 or Schedule 40 um, eight inch diameter pipe, cut it in yeah, half, I, I love and lay it over the I top. Love that. I love that much better. I use that myself. Yep. Yeah. And, and and that, I, that, we, that, I can definitely be revise it to show that. Okay. And yeah, we can and, definitely and revise make sure it to that. And, and make sure you spec re put tell them uh, tell the guys to put pieces of rebar under the under the uh, PVC. That's a good idea too. Yep. That well that that works yep. in helping it from settling with the vibration from the. Yeah, yeah, it won't push it the, into the ground or from into the, the vehicles. Aggregate. Yeah, that. That's those no are the that's, two, that's no problem. Those are the two things that I had. Thank you, okay. uh, Gary and, and Jason. I have a question, and, and it's it's naive from a from a nurse, but um, is there any way that we, we might um, prevent the parking in that area if that's going to affect the? No, the, we don't need to do that, Janet. We don't. Okay, no, See, that's what I'm asking. But that uh, you know, rather than take away one of the, you know, the other the other thing is to say, can you really have multi a multi dwelling there? You know, and and really safely remove the nitrogen you know i mean five bedrooms is five bedrooms so i mean it's either the parking space or a bedroom so 
but well I, I, to be honest with you that the the, the the technology with the title five stuff it's not a problem to have it in a parking area jenny okay good good okay thank you thanks care and thank you jason you got it are there any other questions or comments um i had one question jason um tell me the flow in the first and second compartment of your septic tank there please the it was a 2,500 gallons total. So I think the way they have it broken down, I believe is, um, I can get you specifics because they, they pre-make these tanks and I believe it's like 2,250 and 750 is the way it's broken down. Okay. So 2,250 in the first compartment, 750 in the second compartment. Okay. Yeah, those are those special tanks made just for these fast units, Hillary. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we had the two compartment, two compartment tank or two tanks in a series here, just because it's the five apartments. Yeah, yeah. That's all. Yeah. Um, okay, Nick, do you have any questions? Okay. No, I'm okay with this one, Jenna. Okay, great. Can okay. we have a motion? We do. I'm going to need some help, but um, bear okay. with me here. We can do that for you, honey. Don't <laughs> okay. you worry. I move to approve the J.C. Ellis design plan dated 3-1-21 and grant the nine variances requested. It's 4 one It's 4 one 4 one is the plan? No, yeah. it's 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one okay. is the plan. Okay. Oh, well, I've seen 4-1 in the letter. letter okay. 4-1 letter. is the letter. Sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. Sorry. Um, for the upgrade of a septic system to serve a five bedroom structure, a grandfathered non-conforming dwelling using Advantex <coughs> AX20 denitrification technology under the remedial approval use category, um, subject to the following conditions. Design flow to be limited to 550 gallons per day to serve five bedrooms. The reduced leach area variance, 277 gallons per day provided a 50% reduction no increase in habitable area or conversion of use without Board of Health review. Well water testing, connection with the municipal water system when and if it goes by the property. Right. Deed recording, IA monitoring, and then just a note on the clean out for the building sewers and the other note on protecting the pressure distribution lines from traffic. That's it. Second. I'll second. I'll all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Jason. you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Jason. Thank Have you. a good night, Jason. Jason. Thanks for your magic. You too. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Okay. And our third variance is in 10 East Hill Road. And um, that's CSN Engineering. And so Dave, I would pull up your plan, but it was so big and I got it in so many pieces, I think it would be more confusing to show. So if you have it in a format where you could display it, we could share your screen. Or I think all the members have. Uh, wow, I have Hillary, a hard time. you're really putting the pressure on me here. Now, I'm hang sorry. on, let me see. I can, if you, um, hang on just a second. I think just while you're doing that food for top for the board, maybe we want folks to um, submit copies on uh, a bigger paper, but not the giant poster size paper for ease. Well, of it, are they are they submitted electronically, Hillary? No, no, we scan them. You, you should have them submitted electronically. Yeah, that that's a thought as well. You know, because it, it, that's what we do in in P town. Yes, and it okay. makes it sense. But sometimes, like as you know, I like to lay my hands on the paper. Well, <laughs> you can you can do but but you can do you do both. You yeah, say submit yeah. it electronically and then give me a hard copy. Yeah. So this and, is and the way I, I have it, Dave. I, I mean this this can suffice. We can we can make this work. It's just backwards. <laughs> I got a copy. Uh, I I'm getting it up. I'm getting it up here. Okay. Hang on. Hey, Hillary, will you send me those easy motion makers? Can you do that? Of course. Awesome, thank you. I was taking pictures with my phone, but I it, it's a little hard on the screen. Yeah, no, I can do it right now because I have them. I lost the Zoom here. Can I lose this? No, we have All right, Hillary, if you will let me share the screen. 
Yes, Rebecca, can you let Mr. Bennett share the screen, please? He should be good now. Perfect. There it is. And I will tell you, I will second the motion not to submit full size plans uh, to committee meetings. Um, you make eight or 10 sets of full size plans and then they get thrown away. Seems like a, I know that's kind awful. of a waste of effort. Yes, right. Yeah, it right. is terrible. So good, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. Happy to be here. Uh, I am presenting on behalf of Linda Pinto from CSN Engineering on a planned septic system upgrade without an expansion. Um, there is a single variance that is required here, and that is the septic back to the existing private well uh, to the new system. Much of that is being driven by the fact of um, you know, local approval upgrades requiring that we have a much larger footprint for the soil absorption system. Uh, and the fact that there is really not any area on this lot that you would accommodate the well to be removed. We also went back into the uh, private well records. And I am pleased to say that this well um, and the two tests that were available, um, 2007, and I think in the a couple of years before that, had nitrogen concentrations of less than three or three or less. Um, so this would be a vast improvement to the um, to the situation that exists out here now with uh, the accommodation of a IA system uh, that's a microfast 0 0.05 uh, with denitrification capacity under a general use application. And uh, we request that um, you approve the variance uh, for this lot um, as presented. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have regarding this application. Uh, first of all, was it, was this a, is this a sale, David? Is this a sale that's happening here? And not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. I, um, okay. It's my understanding that it's an elderly woman that owns it. Um, she has a caretaker that we've been dealing with. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't properly introduce the project um, at 10 East Hill Road. Uh, it is for Evelyn Anderson, care of Julia Papineau. I believe Miss Papineau is her daughter. David, are there any uh, Butters Wells in the in the neighborhood? I didn't see anything on the plan. Yeah, the, the uh, well set the well setbacks are shown here and over here. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, okay. So I I have the same comment uh, for this plan as I had for Jason's plans in that I believe a clean out should show at least one clean out on the building sewer to the septic tank. I believe that there is a building sewer inside the house, which is, is standard. Um, you want something in yeah, between I, that it, and the septic tank? Yeah, because technically Title V says at all angle points, but you only really need to put one. So I would put one maybe at the first angle point. Okay. And that's my only comment. Thank you, Gary. And Nick, yeah. you have anything to say? No, I'm all set. I just was wondering okay. about the wells, but they were pointed yeah. out. I'm all set also. Um, okay. Ready for a motion? Ready for yep. a motion. Okay. I move to approve the CSN engineering plan dated. I couldn't find a date on the plan. Yeah, yeah, 318. 318. 318 21. Um, and grant the one variance requested in the letter of March 8th. Three, March 8th. Uh, Mar March 8th. For the upgrade of a septic system to serve a three bedroom structure, a grandfathered non conforming dwelling. Uh, using the microfast 0.5 denitrification technology under the general <laughs> use category. Design flow to be limited to 330 gallons per day to serve uh, three bedrooms. 
no increase in habitable area or conversion of use without Board of Health review, well water testing, deed recording, IA monitoring, um, and a clean out to be placed on the building sewer line. Sounds good. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. Hillary, Thank good you to very see much. you Thank again you. back Thank in action. You. When are you? <laughs> Take care now. Thank Take you. Take care, Bye. David. Thank you. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is a uh, discussion and possible vote to have or not have amnesty day for the town of Wellfleet. Yeah, so um, Mark was requesting that we hold off on amnesty day um, for this year again, because he's too worried about um, groupings and gatherings of people at the transfer station. So, so I told him I would bring it to the Board of Health for a vote. Um. I, I've never had the enjoyment of Amnesty Day. So is there a great deal of congestion and gathering? There can be. There yes. can be. Yep. There can be. Not all the time, but there can be. I've seen okay. it. I've seen it both ways. Okay. We can give so, it to them this again. Yeah, I guess I'm more interested in fighting the fight on reopening the swap shop. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm going to ask you about that. Yeah. Yeah, which I think we should talk about after Amnesty Day, just while we're talking about. Um, yeah, transfer. let's do yes. that. Yeah. Hil oh. Can I ask Janet? Can I uh, have a question to Hillary? Yes, Nick. Go ahead. I just was go curious ahead. if there's an economic cost to Amnesty Day. Oh yeah, big cost to the town. Because I, because I think that you know, with the single swap, we were losing money on that also. So maybe, yeah, we lose a lot of money. At, we lose a lot of money on Amnesty Day. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of a nice, nice. Well, I know I, I partake, I, but I was just curious about the whole economic issue too. So I, I could see oh, holding off on it. It's a huge loss. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so maybe not, we don't need to bear that one this year too. Yeah. No, no I could agree with you. I, I, I could see holding off for another year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, with you. I'm, I'm sorry, Gary. I, I move that we uh, that we uh, postpone Amnesty Day till 2022. I, se I second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Then on the swap shop front, um, Lydia and Christine Shreves had reached out to me what feels like forever ago with a proposal, and it seemed really reasonable and I communicated with Jay and Mark um, about it and I sent them the proposal and it was quite well thought out. Um, they then circulated it to Mike Sakali, who then reached out to his neighboring towns or many towns on Cape Cod to see if their swap shops were open. And apparently swap shops are not open. Um, that being said, I pushed back again and said, well, I'd really like to see our swap shop open. I think we can do it safely. I think it can be monitored. Um, and ours is probably one of the few that's actually staffed by volunteers. So there is a mechanism there to monitor it. And um, I asked them to reconsider and I haven't heard back. So um, COVID wise, I feel like this is something we can handle. People are going out shopping. They're going to grocery stores. They're going to Targets. They're going to Walmarts. They're going, they go if they're comfortable. So we're not forcing anyone to go to the swap shop to shop. The volunteers are ready, willing, and able to volunteer. And um, as far as transmission on stuff, I think that risk is quite low. Right. Uh, the only other thing, obviously, folks are going to have to wear masks, um, and we can limit the number of shoppers maybe to one at a time because the store yeah. is so small. So right, right. Um, I feel like do they maybe, have enough volunteer force to monitor this. Do they feel they have enough? So in their plan, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, yes, because the opening good. of the swap shop is contingent upon having that volunteer there. So okay, good. Um, I. And I feel like they're a responsible group. Um, 
And according to the state, swap shops can be open. So, so the guidelines all say that that these types of operations can be open. So, I think I'd like to push back one more time, um, maybe with the support of the board, letting them know that we've talked about it and we'd really like to find a way to open it. Um, you, you know, I, it, I'm with you. It, it, yeah, it goes I, hand in hand with, with, with the pay as you throw bags. You, I mean, do you need us to do anything official? Or can no, or, maybe or, just, just take a vote that you support it. That's all. I move okay. that we vote to support Hillary's uh, 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 Hillary's endeavor to get the swap shop reopened. Second. Uh, I'll second. Hillary, will we see if, uh, uh, the, the formal details when it's finally decided? Yeah, I can send yeah. you. I I can send you the report now that the, right. those folks put together. Just I mean, to see how the well, actual yeah. logistics will maybe, work. Maybe yeah. what our motion should say then is that we accept the plan yeah. that has been proposed to the board yeah. of health. Yeah, yeah. that's so fine. Accept yeah. the plan. Yeah. Okay, might yeah, have a little bit good. more oomph, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. That's yeah. good. 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 Um, and then other than that, we have, you know, very few cases at the moment. Um, most folks are getting vaccinated. We had a push to get our restaurant folks, um, food service workers, hospitality workers, retail workers, all vaccinated through Outer Cape Health uh, with the J&J &J vaccine. And Oops. then the J&J &J vaccine got <laughs> put on pause. So um, yep. those efforts are on pause at the moment. Um, Outer Cape Health is going to try to secure enough Moderna doses, but it's more of a hassle because folks have to go back twice. But um, the J&J the &J is literally one in a million or something. I know. Yeah, yeah. One, yeah, one in a million. Right? Six, six cases. I mean, I guess it seems like what they might do is put some more restrictions on it. Maybe J&J &J can't be used on women ages, ba 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 da ba 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 Right. But It'll be back in use in a week or so, I think. But I, I wonder how many people are going to be eager to get it now. Yeah. I got the J and J, um, right? Yeah, um, I hate Nick, needles. Nick, I tell wanted us from one a clinical shot. perspective. Nick, could you give us an outlook on the clinical perspective of J and J? I think the I think it's going to be back in uh, in use within a week or so. I don't think that the risk of it's very very minimal unless they find out a little bit more details about the, the women who who did get sick. Right. Maybe there's some uh, link, uh, you know, among them, but. Uh, I, I think it'll be back in use. We just need it too much. And I think the, the risks are going to be proven to be nil. If, if, I mean, very negligible. Yeah. OK. But do you think people but, are going to be fearful? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, do. Would, I, do. I wouldn't get it right now. Well, I'm just saying it'll, it, well, it will be you're in the in. age group, Hillary. I know. That's what worries me. I'm in the age group. I don't want right. any more kids. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, right. I'm in that Well, place. you shouldn't get it. You okay. shouldn't get well, it got, because you're in I that age group. Pfizer. No, I know. I just, I wonder if they're going to come back with a little tighter restriction. Um, they probably should, right? And limit it. Yeah. 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 So, so we'll see. Um, we work very closely with Outer Cape Health. So we'll, we'll move this group along. But what we found was that most of them have already found vaccine elsewhere. So I think we're doing really oh, good no. on, on vaccination. So that's, that's really good and promising. Excellent. That's exciting. Yeah. Okay, that's, good. That's good. Great. And, and what about the all... red, the rest of the Cape that everybody's hearing about? What is that well, all about? Yeah, so the Brazilian strain was circulating in the Barnstable, Dennis, Yarmouth area. And there was a major uptick um, for a couple weeks there. The numbers are holding stable and going down. So I think we're, we're coming off of that. Um, we're seeing a couple more cases out in Truro, out in P-Town. Um, we just have, you know, less than a handful right now. So... I think it, we're going to see little blips of this. Um, okay, yeah. You know, as forever, as right? Vaccinated. Yeah, I think it's going to be forever, unfortunately. Forever. But yeah, um, but we don't have anything really to report on that's going on. So, okay, okay, so that's, that's, good. Good. that's good news. Um, good. The other thing I want to talk about maybe at our next meeting in May is the shellfish farmers market. Yeah. Uh, I, I do too. I went. I went on uh, the Saturday before Easter. Oh, you did! Great. I, yeah, and I volunteered to uh, put put the product on ice. Um, and it was the first time I was seeing the whole process in action after the first time. Remember, I covered for yes. you for Jeff's yes. birthday party. Yes. And I mean, the volume was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, over two hundred people came by. Um, 
very, I, I thought from a, a health perspective, it was very well done, but you had Nancy Chivetta there the whole time, you know, and everything was tagged, everything was on ice. Everybody who I gave product to had ice in their car, but there was no one monitor. I, I mean, I, I don't know, Hillary, you know. Um, yeah, so it's my very concern, big. Yes, my concern, and I can, I can lay this out here right now because I want us to sort of think about it before our next meeting is, the permits that we issued were temporary food service permits, and those are not to exceed a certain number of events. Um, and the agreement was that this was gonna go up until Vibrio season, because once the weather's warm, sort of all bets are off in my mind, that it worries mm -hmm. me. So now Nancy is passing off the market to the Wellfleet Shellfish Association, or- um, Yes, that's it, yes. Is that, I think that's their name. Yeah, um, WSA, yeah. And they're moving the operation to South Wellfleet to the drive-in parking lot. Um, I'm really worried in warmer months, I, I think it's a really bad idea to ask people to bring their own coolers and bring their own ice. Right, right. In warm weather because we've seen norovirus here. Um, we've seen some Vibrio. I, I, I I'm struggling to get beyond the thought of how can we eliminate all of these risks in the summertime with way more people, way more product and warmer weather. So I put that out there to you. I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's doable if the market sells coolers and they have an ice machine on site that they fill with their own ice and give to the people with a label on top of the cooler that says, take me right home, need to be kept cold. Like, I feel like we have to, we have to give them everything they need to reduce the risk. I don't want people bringing in dirty coolers in the summertime right. or gathering ice from sources unknown to me because Absolutely. we have a brand yeah, and right, a product right. to protect. So, right. so and, and the other know. thing, the other thing, Hillary, is I think I, I think one of the things that I would I would like to see because the the reason I got involved in it was because they wanted to use the the two forty six parking lot. Yeah. And and I said to them, it's you know you're not going to handle two hundred cars in the summer on Main Street, so that's no. that's an out. But uh, and I was concerned about that. But I think we would really have to see again, just like the swap shop, a really tight plan, plan of who does what. Because right now you've got a lot of your shell fishing, shell fishermen working at it and making it happen. They're going to be out on the flats in the summer. You know, I mean, so I, I, don't, I don't feel like there's there's a serve safe safe person and a and somebody who really understands Vibrio and norovirus. They're running the show. So Zach Dixon, Holbrook Oyster, is the certified individual and that thought crossed my mind today in a conversation too is like well what if it's low tide like where's he yes he is yeah, the guy that, so right, there was right. pushback there was pushback when we said i want each of the vendors to get the serve safe certification because right. i mean truly they should have it and if they're selling hundreds of pieces of product the course was i think 150 bucks like it's a it's a pretty worthy investment on our end right. to make sure there's a solid understanding of things that can go wrong how when where and why right right uh, and then the other piece is the board of health is going to have to grant a variance to allow temporary food service beyond the days that they've already been permitted for in this calendar year so um I think I want you guys to just think about it, um, think about ways to work it. I'll get back to Nancy and say, we want to see a detailed plan right. uh, for the shift, the management, the oversight. Absolutely. And maybe we can put it on our agenda uh, for next month. Am I wrong in thinking that your idea about them supplying the, the ice and the packaging, that seems like that would eliminate a lot of problems. Well, yes, but I don't know if there's going to be pushback to that, right? Because someone's well, going to be huge. I bet you there'll be well, huge, that's pushback. huge pushback. Yeah. It has huge to be pushback. what it is. Yeah. Huge pushback because that's yeah. going to cost them. Absolutely. But you know what? If that's the price of doing business, then that's the price exactly. of doing business. Right, right. right. I, I, I because think the, we got to be on board with this. Exactly. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, is that Hillary is has a hugely important point about this random uh, the randomization of the whole 
uh, 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 project uh, here. And I think if you had a standard where everybody had the serve safe uh, deal going and they supplied their own ice and their own packaging, yeah. then that may actually may make this thing actually work. Right. And yeah. they would have a market. Right. Because it sounds like otherwise, it, I think they may be limited to just the winter months, right? Right. Well, because my other question is, are, is, is our local board of health the first line of approval or does DMF have to do something here and the, the, the uh, Massachusetts Board of Health? I mean, are we are we the first line? No, we are. DMF, uh, DMF has agreed to allow shellfish mar farmers markets. Um, and we are we are the food protection program. So okay. the okay. DPH DPH only gets involved if we ask for their help. Um, okay. Conveniently, they reached out to me to um, just, you know, hear how things were going and to talk about expanding into summer months and, and, you know, what my thoughts were. And so they're on board to help help if we need help. I don't, I'm not sure we need help. I think we understand right. more, more than they do. Um, their concerns are shared by all of us. So, um, you know, they're ready, willing, and able if we need them, if we're getting pushed right. back or, you know, whatever the situation is, but... Right. But I just, I just at this point want us to just start running through it in our minds and see what it looks like. That's thank all. you for thank you for right. putting that seed in. Now, now I'm going to be thinking about this a lot now. Yeah, I, I, am too. I am too. After seeing it, Gary, I am too. I am too. Well, Jody's been, Jody's been a participant. In, I know she in all of I saw her there on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw her there, and, and and it's and it's and it's lovely. But my question is, has anybody else in the state done the, the shell fisherman's farmers market in the summer months? No. Anybody else? No. Okay, so no. we would be the first one. So. We, we really have to set our standard high because we could end up in very, yes. very high, very yeah. high. We really yeah. do. It's our that's our responsibility. I because think. all it takes is one, just one, one, yeah. one yeah. slip up and the whole thing comes crashing. Yes, that's yes. You're yes. Those are my thoughts. Exactly. It, it's and not it, like it we have a needs, second or third it needs chance. Some here. kind of a management structure. It's it's. Um, it needs Things some to be organized. Of, uh, uh, organized and overseen. Overseen. Exactly. Right. Nancy's in Holbrook's truck the whole time. Okay. She's got her back to the whole process that's happening. And she's right. making sure that Sam's oysters go here because they were ordered online and this one's clams go here. So that's what she's doing, that they're yeah. tagged and, and that. Yeah. So she's taking care of the tagging portion of the Vibrio prevention in there. So she's got her back to everything. So even with the 200 people that were there on the Saturday before Easter, there was no one. And Ginny Parker was out sick. But anyway, there was right. no one overseeing well, anything there. Anything. I, I think we'll be able to, Janet, I think that, that now that the, the, the three of us, and I know Ken will have yeah. some good ideas, I think now that we're on it, I think maybe in May yeah. we'll, we'll be able to really kick around something pretty good. 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 Like Very okay. good. Rebecca, okay. can you add that to our agenda for next month, please? Right. Uh, and um, as far as the minutes uh, goes, is that it for new business, Hillary? Yes, that's all I've got for you today. Okay, that good. knee is moving. And when knee is moving. Yeah, no, I'm sitting in the glider. Okay, I put a sweatshirt on over my pajamas, so I look good. dressed. Excellent. This is what you should do for Zoom. Um, and I, I went over <laughs> the minutes, um, and they look fine to me. They, Anybody want to make too. a motion? Yeah. You want to make a motion? I move to approve the minutes of March 10th. Okay. Second. Oh, second. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Folks, I'm going to sign off. Bye, Great. Gary. Thank Thanks you, Gary. For your help, Gary. I love you guys. Thanks Have a great night. Love okay. you. <laughs> Bye, Gary. Bye. Bye. Okay. That's all okay. we got. Okay. That's all we got. Yeah. We're we should adjourn because we're quorumless. All yes. right. Okay. Bye. Open Bye, guys. Door. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Jacob. you. Bye-bye.